All right, let's turn in our Bibles one last time to Psalm 97. Psalm 97. Psalm 97, we'll finish up tonight. Should be a shorter message this evening. But let's as a group, let's all stand if you're able, and we'll just read the entire psalm. Psalm 97, we'll just read it together. Psalm 97. It says, The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goeth before him, and burneth up his enemies round about. His lightnings enlightened the world. The earth saw and trembled. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgments, O Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth, thou art exalted far above all gods. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous, and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this psalm, Psalm 97. This psalm which began as a morning reading of the pastor. And then you spoke to him through it. And now you're speaking to your people by your spirit through this psalm. Help us to own this psalm. Help us to understand what it's saying. And help us to apply it to our lives. Help us to see whether or not we are your child. Based upon the characteristics that are found in this psalm. Be with the preacher tonight, we pray, as he concludes this psalm. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. I'm one of those people that thinks it's just great to do a whole chapter or to do a whole book in the Bible. And so some of you have been with me for all of these sermons, starting last Sunday morning, last Sunday night, uh, this Sunday morning, tonight. And uh, let's review what we've seen here. We see in verse number one, the Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitudes of the isles be glad thereof. The Lord reigns. The Lord rules over everything. And that ought to make everyone in the world rejoice. Everyone ought to be glad that Jehovah is in charge. But what we see here is, in verses three through seven, is that there are many people who do not submit to Jehovah's leadership. And these people, it said, are going to be destroyed by fire, by lightning, by earthquake. And it says, the hills will melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. And we see here that those who refuse to submit to Jehovah will be destroyed. But there's an invitation here. And it says in verse number 7, Worship him, all ye gods. All of you who are powerful, who think that you're greater than Jehovah, worship Jehovah. Worship Jehovah. Give up your idols, your nothingness, those things that you trust in that are nothing compared to Jehovah God. But then this morning we looked at verse number 8. And there's one group of people who obeys God's command in this psalm. And that is the people of God. It says, Zion heard that the Lord reigns and was glad. And the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgments, O Lord. We learned this morning that the Lord is high above all the earth, exalted far above all gods. He's in control of this planet. He's above everything else 
that people trust in in this world. It tells us in verse number 10, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. The Lord preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. So that is a, a background here. Jehovah keeps his people from evil and from temptation and sin many times. But when we find ourselves being oppressed or we find ourselves uh, falling into sin, then we can call upon him and he will deliver us. So tonight we come to the conclusion in verses 11 and 12. And there are three words here. What should the Christian life look like? What are three words that ought to describe the life of the child of God? And the first word is light. Light. You know, Jesus talks about this. He says in one place, I am the light of the world. And then in Matthew chapter 5, he says, you are the light of the world. Light. C.H. Spurgeon says this. God has lightning for sinners and light for saints. Light. Verse 11 says, light is sown for the righteous. What is light? In our Sunday school, we've been talking about 1 John chapter 1 and 2. And we noted the word light. You know, God is a God of light. And they who follow God are to walk in the light. You know, what does light represent? It represents life. It represents knowledge. It represents purity. And it says here that light is sown for the righteous. What does the word sown mean? You think about the sower went forth to sow. <coughs> light is spread out there for those who are righteous, for those who are gods, who are declared righteous through the Lord Jesus Christ. Who are walking in his ways. Light is sown. But as with anything with God. This light is not random. And so. God. Puts light. Into our lives. And forms it into. A path. For the righteous. And the light that God puts in our lives. Leads us. To our final destination. As we go along the path that God has laid out for us, he is making us into the person he wants us to be, and that is making us, molding us into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And eventually at the end of the path, we end up with him in eternity. Light. What kind of light does God give us? Well, Psalm 119, verse 105 it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Here is the light. And I appreciate the ministry of uh, the lady, Elizabeth Elliot. And one of the things that she always emphasizes for people is, do the next thing. Do the next thing. Do the next thing. You're reading in the scriptures. You're listening to the preaching and teaching of God's word. And it's like, wow, this is something God wants me to do. Or this is something God does not want me to do that I've got in my life. And we simply say, okay, this is God's will for this day. I'm going to do it. <laughs> You've gone to the next lighthouse, so to speak. And so God, the Holy Spirit, who lives within the believer, applies the word of God to the believer's life, shows the believer what it's saying and how it applies to his life, and then we do it. And we go from one lighthouse to the next lighthouse to the next lighthouse, going along the journey in the direction God has planned for us until finally we see the lights of glory. What does a Christian life look like? Light. Psalm 112, verse 4 it says, Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. Light in the darkness. 
Everything around us can be darkness. But there is that light, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit showing us from the Word of God. And we go to that next step on the journey. For the Christian, God gives light through the Bible, through the circumstances of life. God reveals to us the pathway of holiness and eternal life. So what does the Christian life look like? Light. We have light. Number two, gladness. Gladness. It says in verses 11 and 12, Gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous. Gladness and joy. For the Christian, for God's child, these are not based on circumstances or situations. They're based in Jehovah God. Look at Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. There it is. Habakkuk chapter 3. The last three verses of this book. I remember these verses hitting me some years ago. The meaning of these verses. Verse number 17 of Habakkuk chapter 3. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. In other words, for an agricultural society, this was a bad year. The crops failed, the animals got diseased and died. You know, maybe it was the swine, well, I guess it wouldn't be the swine flu for the... For the Jewish people, they didn't have pigs, but, you know, bird flu, you know, whatever it is, and all the birds die, and all the goats die, and you have a bad year of crops, a bad year with your animals, just a bad year. And yet even in times of earthly despair and poverty, Habakkuk says this, yet... I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. There's a book called uh, Hinds Feet in High Places. And I think my wife Heather has read that. It's a really good book uh, written by a lady, for ladies in particular, but I'm sure it would be an encouragement to anybody. You know, even if everything else goes south, so to speak, yet, and I hope this is your testimony, because this is the testimony of a believer, yet I will rejoice in Jehovah, the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation because he is my strength. You know, testimony time. Sherry was talking about, you know, my grace is enough for you. My grace is sufficient. And that uh, account, the, uh, we see Paul had a thorn in the flesh. We don't exactly know what it is. Some people say it might have been a demonic uh, oppression. Some people believe it might have been an eye problem because of some of the things we see in the scriptures. But whatever it is, he prayed, take it away. Take it away. Three times he prayed, take it away. And God wouldn't take it away. And the Lord Jesus Christ gave him something that was even better than answering the prayer the way he wanted it answered. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ said, My grace is enough for you. Philippians 4.4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. The most important word in that verse is the Lord. Okay, Not rejoice in circumstances, 
Rejoice in possessions. Rejoice in health. All of these things are going to fail us. But one never fails us. And that is the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. C.H. Spurgeon says this. Joy is the privilege and the duty of a Christian. And he cannot have too much of it if it be the right kind. Never let us give way to repining. Rather let our holy cheerfulness cause others to inquire. Whence comes their happiness? The psalmist has bidden the earth rejoice. And here he turns to the excellent of the earth and bids them to lead the song. If all others fail to praise the Lord, the godly must not. To them God is peculiarly revealed. By them he should be specially adored. C.H. Spurgeon. So we put these two thoughts together. The idea that we have light and the idea that we ought to be glad. And we see Psalm 32. Psalm 32. Beginning in verse number 8. Psalm 32. Beginning in verse number 8. This is the Lord speaking to David. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. There's that light. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. And in verse 1 of Psalm 33, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. And here it is. God will guide us if we're righteous, if we're upright, and the result of obedience to God is gladness. Is gladness. Sadness is a result of disobedience, Gladness is a result of obedience. And that's an interesting thing in Psalm 33, verse 1. Praise is comely for the upright. The word comely means attractive. And so if you want to be an attractive Christian to this world, you will, number one, be upright, be living the way you ought to live, but number two, be praising God, be praising Him. And that's where we get to the last word here, Three things that characterize a Christian. The Christian has light. The Christian is glad. And number three, the Christian is thankful. It says here in verse number 12 of Psalm 97, Give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness. What is holiness? Well, God defines what it means to be holy. Holy is who God is, and God is holy. So what does it mean to give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness? It means that God's people are thankful when they remember that Jehovah is who He is. Jehovah is faithful, and He will make good on all of His promises especially those concerning salvation in his Messiah, Jesus. Look at Psalm 30. Psalm 30. Verses 1 through 5. It says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought me up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, 
but joy cometh in the morning. <laughs> there it is, the psalmist. You know, God is faithful to keep his promises. And he says, I will give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Holy is who God is. He sets the standard. You know, there used to be a commercial for BMW. I believe it was BMW. And uh, the commercial was all these car salesmen. And they were saying about their cars, yeah, this is kind of like a BMW. This is equivalent to the such and such BMW. What was that commercial trying to say? They were trying to say that the BMW German car was the standard, okay? And that everyone else was trying to be like the standard. Well, when it comes to holiness, the standard is God. You know, we can't describe holiness except saying that what God is, is holy, and what God is not, is unholy. And so to give thanks at the remembrance of God's holiness is to be thankful for who God is. And one of the greatest things is his promise that he gives us through the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive our sins, to save our souls, and to make us one of God's children, and to one day take us to be with him forever. The Family Bible Note says this quote, The holiness of God is a terror to the wicked, but to the righteous, a source of great joy. The wicked are terrified at the thought of a holy God, but to the righteous, to those of us who are his, it's a source of great joy. So as we think about these three words, we see tonight, the Christian has light for his path, joy for his journey, and thankfulness for God's faithfulness to do all that he's promised to do. Truly, and I don't say this in an arrogant way, it's just the fact, Christians have the best life, and they alone can rejoice in Jehovah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we see these three words, these three characteristics that ought to be in our lives as Christians. And we pray that you'd help us to have these three things in our lives. We pray that we would be looking into your word for that light that next light pole that we need to go toward so that we can have holiness on our journey and then our destination might be glory. We pray that we might be glad in our journey so that people will see us and say, what do you have to be happy about? And we can say, Jehovah is my God. And then we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us as we think about the third thing. Help us to be thankful. And help us to remember who you are and to be thankful that we are your child and that you always keep your promises. You always do what you say you're going to do. And when you say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and be saved, you mean it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You mean it. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. You mean it. When you say, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You mean it. And we're thankful for your consistency and who you are. Help us to go forth from here and live this out in our lives by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.